Marching steadily towards an SEC showdown from Louisiana with number 17 Georgia down on the bayou to take on number nine LSU. It's all coming up at the top of the hour over on the SEC network. Hi, everyone, and welcome. Steve Schlanger with the world champion and Olympic medalist Bridget Sloan. Glad to have you with us. And Bridget, let's dive right into the gym dogs who are incorporating so many new faces into the rotation, the roster this season. You almost need name tags to figure out who's who, but they're building depth and gaining experience. So a lot of reason for optimism. Absolutely. They have 11 newcomers on the team this year. Eight of those newcomers being freshmen, three transfers. So head coach Courtney Metz-Carter. 
Atlas that she is really honing in on every athlete getting the experience they need. It is a large team which has created the amount of depth that they're not quite used to. So it's been really exciting for them to get that experience and really just put up the perfect six routines every single meet. Meanwhile, LSU season has been built around a new philosophy they came up with called We Climb. I definitely don't think they were foreshadowing when they came up with We Climb, but they have faced so much adversity with injuries and illness. And being a student athlete is really hard sometimes. So head coach Jay Clark mentioned, every meet we inch closer and closer, and at the end of the day, We Climb. All right, the lineups coming up from LSU and first the national anthem. Mike Smith will take you through the festivities from the Maravich Center in Baton Rouge. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Louisiana State University at the LSU Athletic Department, this is Mike Smith welcoming you inside the Pete Maravich Assembly Center for tonight's NCAA and Southeastern Conference Gymnastics Meet featuring the University of Georgia Bulldogs and your Fighting Tigers of LSU. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we kindly ask that you rise if you're able, remove your caps as we honor America, and remember those in our service with the singing of our national anthem performed this evening by Elena Buckley. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we Twilight's less gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. Cesar Garcia and Ray Nett. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from our women's team, Lynn Lacey Frederick, Darlene Ford, Jean Marie Lacobe, Jane Mullins, Janie Perdue Lapine, Donna Rathjet, Tammy Yasso, Tammy Noonan, Jamie Snopek Soche, Jennifer Landry Board, Ida Canovas Keplinger. Michelle Wagesback, Aparna Ray, Cindy Cochran, Jennifer Roberts, Trisha Corbello Jackson, Colleen Barger, Kelly Smith Palermo, Stacy Wagner Romaguera, Stephanie Hyatt Montalbano, Sharon Garadell, Catherine Hilton Musso, Jade Bryan, Lindsay Thompson Bonaventure, April Burkholder Coulter, Kelly Lee Evans, Kelly Phelan, 
Christy Ep Esposito Tangui, Ashley Claire Kearney Thickbid, Paige Cipollone Rusnak, Ashley Lee Scuria, Kaylee Dixon Abud, Jesse Jordan, Malia Mathis, Mackenzie Fox Davenport, Mincio Hall Harris, Jessica Sabona, Caroline Pearson, Ashley Bugs Nett, Sydney Ewing, Lauren Lee, Kennedy Edney, Olivia Gunter, Bridget Dean, Christina Desiderio, Reagan Campbell, Sammy Durante, Sarah Edwards, Kirby Rathjen, and ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the longest serving coach in the history of the Southeastern Conference, the one, the only, D.D. Bro. Now, now, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to the floor our visitors from Athens, the University of Georgia Gym Dogs. Let's meet the gym dogs. Soraya Hawthorne, Josie Angeny, Sarah Cohen, Haley DeYoung, Sandra Elsonic, Aaron Williams, Amanda Cashman, Sydney Fitzgerald, Lulie Hathaway, Katie Finnegan, Jeffrey Scott, Vanessa Denise, Ariel Posen, Nicole King, Naya Howard, Jackie Moran, Madeline Pro, and May Pond. The coaching staff for UGA, the assistants are Sam Welburn and Ryan Roberts. The head coach in her sixth season for the Georgia Gym Dogs is Courtney Kupetz Carter. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the Georgia Gym Dogs. It's time for the greatest fans in the sport to stand and welcome the next champions to wear the purple and gold. These are your fighting tigers of LSU. A former international elite gymnast at the junior level who trained at Texas Dreams, a freshman from Alexandria, Louisiana, Annie Beard. A level 10 gymnast out of Bull City Gymnastics, a JO national qualifier, a freshman from Hillsboro, North Carolina, Ashley Howard. 
level 10 gymnast from Pearland Elite Training Center, a JO national qualifier and vault champion, a Nastia Lucan Cup qualifier, a freshman from Lake Charles, Louisiana, Bryce Wilson. A U.S. Elite National Team member, a JO national champion, now in her second season with the Tigers from Lee Summit, Missouri, Malia Finnegan. A JO national champion on the uneven bars and the all around, a sophomore from Lawrenceburg, Missouri, Alexis Jeffrey. A former elite competitor with Texas Dreams and a member of the SEC all freshman team, now a sophomore from the Big D, KJ Johnson. This Tiger is a former elite national team member and a JO national champion. Level 10 gymnast from Twin City Twisters, a sophomore from Chanhassen, Minnesota, Corey Tatum. This Tiger is an SEC ball champion, an all SEC and SEC freshman team member, a former U.S. elite national team member, a junior from Athens, Georgia, Elena Arenas. This Tiger is a former JO national qualifier and now a junior from Mandeville, Sierra Ballard. Also a former JO national qualifier and a junior from Atlanta, Georgia, Chase Brook. One of the top all-around gymnasts in the nation and All-American on vault, floor, and the all-around. She is the 2021 national vault champion and SEC champion, a junior from Cornelius, North Carolina, Haley Bryant. An All-American on the uneven bars and a former U.S. national team member, now a junior from Hillsdale, New Jersey, Olivia Dunn. An All-American on vault, uneven bars, and the all-around, an SEC four champion, the 2021 SEC Specialist of the Year, a senior from the Big D, Kaya Johnson. This Tiger is a senior from Houston, Texas. Say hey to Lexi Nibs. Also, a senior from H-Town, please welcome Maddie Rao. A former JO national champion and now a senior from Detroit, Michigan, High Rivers. A senior from Luling, Louisiana, Cameron Ryan. An All-American on the uneven bars, a former elite national team member and a senior from Evergreen, Colorado, Alona Shinakova. And this Tiger is a former JO national qualifier who trained in Capital Gymnastics Training Center. She owns two individual titles on vaulting in her first season with the Tigers, a graduate student from Gainesville, Virginia. Say hey to Cammy Hall. And now, let's meet the coaching staff. In her second season as an assistant coach, she is an NCAA champion and a 2004 Olympian, Courtney McCool Griffith. In his second season as an assistant coach, please welcome Garrett Griffith. In her third season as an assistant, she is an NCAA champion and a 17-time All-American as a Tiger, Ashley Bugs Nett. And Tiger fans, in his 11th season overall in the program, and third as your head coach, please welcome Jay Clark. Tiger fans, a welcome to our alumni and these Fighting Tigers of LSU. Yes. All right, we're set to roll. Make sure you join us over on the SEC Network after Auburn against Alabama. A full night of SEC gymnastics. We're coming up next. Make sure you join us on the SEC Network. The first Friday in February, and we spend it down on the bayou with a pair of nationally ranked teams as the 17th ranked Jim Dogs from Georgia visit number nine LSU for a matchup at the Maravich Center 
in Baton Rouge. Hi, everyone, and welcome. Steve Schlanger with the world champion and the Olympic medalist, Bridget Sloan. Glad to have you with us. And, Bridget, let's start with Georgia, a team with so many new faces. They needed name tags at the beginning of the season, but it's a program that is building depth and experience. Exactly. They have 11 newcomers, eight of those newcomers as freshmen, three transfers. So head coach Gordon Kupetz Carter right now is trying to get as much quality gymnastics and experience out of her team and put up those six best every weekend. And for LSU, this is a program that is building the entire season around a philosophy known as we climb. And you know what? I don't think they were foreshadowing here, but they have had adversity week in and week out. And at the end of the day, this, these athletes, they climb and they get inch for inch to get that goal. That is Jay Clark, the head coach for LSU in his third year and 11th year with the program. Of course, also spent two decades at Georgia where he had seven national titles and 14 SEC so going against his former state and the gym dogs here this evening in his home building where they've had some very good crowds so far this season. In fact, for the home opener, had a record crowd of over 12,000. LSU will begin on the vault, Georgia on the bars. And here is the lineup for LSU to kick things off. And for LSU on this particular event. They are ranked number four. It's their best event statistically right now among the four. Elena Arenas, the junior from Athens, Georgia, will be first up. So the hometown girl from Athens going against the gym dogs here to start things tonight. This lead off position. Excellent, Yurchenko full, great form throughout. Just the tiniest step on that landing in this leadoff position. Elena did a fabulous job getting these LSU Tigers ready to rock and roll here. She won the SEC vault title back in 2021. And now for Georgia, Amanda Cashman, the senior from New Jersey, first up on the bars. And Cashman coming off a season high on this event at the last week where she scored a 9-7-7-5. Amanda in this lead off position for Georgia on uneven bars, an event that has given them trouble in the past. Nice single release there to Kachif. And a transition to the low bar, her bail, little leg separation. Little short on that cast handstand. The little details are what those judges are looking to deduct on. And a step on the landing. Not the greatest, strongest start, but it was clean. Little deductions throughout, but Amanda Cashman doing a great job leading off this Georgia team and just getting that ball rolling. Georgia coming off a good week of practice following a loss at Florida last Friday where they still season's best road score in the defeat. Now, Alona Shenakova, the senior from Colorado, second up here on the vault for LSU. Shenakova, an All-American here on the vault and one of the most consistent competitors on this event that is competing for LSU. And she really has gymnastics in the DNA. Her sister is a competitor at Michigan. She is fabulous on this event. Your Chico, one and a half. Ooh, big step there. But at the end of the day, these coaches are wanting these athletes to overdo it because right now they want to get those jitters out. She took a huge step on that Yurchenko, one and a half. It is a 10-0 start value, so when she finds that landing, she will be lethal because that is a nearly perfect ball if she can stick it. I'm Elena Arenas opened things up with a score of 9.775. And now back over to bars for Josie and Jenny. And the senior Josie. from Pennsylvania coming up next. And, and Jenny really showing a lot of promise this season on this event that is actually the highest ranked of any event for the Jim Dogs this season. Absolutely, she's fabulous. She is a competitor, transfer from Kentucky. Just the dismount here, double layout. 
again, just a slight hop on that landing. Very clean throughout. And we're going to take another look at this dismount. It is a double layout. She actually can do a full twisty double layout, so she's watering it down. In really excellent amplitude through that scale. Just couldn't find that landing and get that stick. Was all SEC at Kentucky and coming off a shoulder injury recently as we slide over to Aaliyah Finnegan, the sophomore from Kansas City. And an athlete who has been forced to do multiple events because of so many injuries on this LSU team. And that was an impressive ball. That was a round off, a Yurchenko half on pike off. Very unique in college. We see a lot of Yurchenko one and a half in Yurchenko holes. Gets that block. It is a blind landing, meaning she was going. She can't spot the mat, which is how these athletes normally land. Wow, Aaliyah doing a fantastic job for LSU on vault. Both teams starting off so strong on this first event. And vault with a 9-7, 9-7-5 so far for LSU. Finnegan trying to be the best of the bunch to this point. And now Naya Howard, the freshman from Virginia. Third on bars for Georgia. They've had a 9-7-5, 9-8 to this point. Naya can fly high. See what I mean right here. Excellent combination. And we welcome you. Those of you who watched Auburn against Alabama, we are at the Maravich Center in Baton Rouge for this nationally ranked matchup between Georgia and LSU. The Tigers ranked ninth, the Jim Dogs 17. We are in the first rotation. Steve Schlanger with the world champion Bridget Sloan. This is Chase Brock, the junior from Atlanta, next up on the vault. She is the fourth of the six competitors on this event for LSU. And the Yurchenko one and a half, and that is a stuck landing. Last week she had a little step, but not tonight. That was incredible. As far as this format, uh, you might be familiar with it by now. Six gymnasts per team compete in each event. They drop the lowest score, just the five best count, and then it's the team with the highest aggregate score at the end is the there you see the order of the rotations for both sides. And again, this is just the first rotation. You haven't missed much about midway through it for each side. Jeffrey Scott, the freshman from just outside of Kansas City, is up next for Georgia on the bars. Both of these sides coming off of losses last week. LSU fell at Arkansas. Georgia went down at Florida, but the Jim Dogs did have their best season road score of the campaign to so bringing some momentum here into this meet tonight. Like you said, Steve, both coming off of road losses, but tonight is all about building confidence. Joffrey doing an excellent job so far. Ends it with a stuck double layout. Really nice routine, very clean. Looking for a big score here. Well, as we go back to the vault, let's guide you through the points of emphasis, Bridget, and what we're looking for. Judges are always looking for the execution and the landing. How high are these athletes getting? How far from the vault? Of course, the sticks. And then the start value. You're going to see a lot of 995 start values and 10 start values. KJ Johnson, sophomore, is going to actually do a Yurchenko full. Last week, she actually did it perfectly and scored a 9.95. Let's see if she can do it again. see the 9.95 she just had a hop on the look one thing she does so well is she showcases her form that laid out position throughout excellent work and the points of emphasis overall on the bars for georgia handstands releases and dismounts the handstands are where the athletes lose the most that is where the judges are looking to take those deductions so being in that vertical position releases 
second high, getting those hands over the bar, smooth swings, and then, of course, a stuck dismount. A little and cherry this is on top. Yeah, why not? <laughs> and Katie Finnegan, the junior from Long Island next, coming off a decorated high school career, five-time New York State champion, and was third at nationals on the bars here a few years ago as well. Katie so far doing a fabulous job showcasing those handstands and flying high on her releases. Just the dismount, tuck full in, and a stuck landing. Sticks are contagious. Absolutely fantastic job, Katie Finnegan. And another look at this dismount. This is a tuck full in, and just sees that landing and gets the stick. So Georgia with several scores in a row, nine eights or above. So at this point, they'd be looking to drop their leadoff bars routine. Amanda Cashman, who had the 9.75. And here is the superstar, Haley Bryant, the junior from Carolina, the eight-time All-American and number three in this event in the nation a year ago. Wow. Steve, we might see a 10 tonight. That was incredible. Front pike with a half, the way she does it. I mean, I don't know how she does it so well because it is textbook. The height, distance, the flair. Absolutely remarkable. The block she gets off that vault is incredible and she finds that landing and she sticks it almost every time and we might see a perfect 10. Now she had a perfect 10 on the vaults at Mizzou a few weeks ago where she won the event title, also captured the all-around, and of course was the NCAA national champion on vault two years ago as well. Now, Haley DeYoung finishing things off on bars for Georgia here. DeYoung, the senior from Vancouver. Haley actually changed her bar routine this year, taking away the single release. Moving the bars a little bit closer, head coach Courtney Pets Carter said she's so much more confident, and you can see right here, she's confident in her gymnastics, and it shows that was a stuck double layout for Haley DeYoung wrapping up this last rotation. Well, she had a season high on bars against LSU last year, but for Georgia, we're going to find out more about their growth and development plan of this young squad when we come back. My favorite TV show is Grey's Anatomy. My favorite pump up song is We Paid by Lil Baby. My favorite food is any kind of pasta. My most used emoji is the one with the star eyes. And Lil Baby would have loved this, a 9-9 on bars, kicking things off. Haley DeYoung, part of this up-and-coming Georgia roster. Glad to have you with us for this Friday Night Showdown. Steve Schlanger with the national champion and world champion, Bridget Sloan. And Bridget, for Courtney Kupetz Carter, has quite a task on her hands, but she's very excited about it because there's 11 new faces on this roster, the most depth she has ever had, and it's really about experience and building what she envisions to be quite the program here in the next few years. These are the good problems that coaches get to have. Having too many athletes to choose, that is the exciting thing. And take a look, she has eight freshmen. That is remarkable. Three transfers, two fifth year. I mean, the team is stacked with a lot of different athletes coming with different experiences. And I think she's doing a fabulous job of breaking that down and making sure that she is able to put up her best her best team at every single weekend. All right, now Georgia with some work to do after the first rotation trailing LSU. And coming up next, Georgia will shift to vault LSU on bars when we come back with rotation two from Baton Rouge. And this is exciting stuff. Going to see the University of Florida and Auburn take on Trinity Thomas, Leanne Wong, Suni Lee. I mean, you are seeing legends compete that weekend. And so far through the first rotation, LSU ahead by two tenths. Chase Brock with a career high of 9.95 on the vault. Very impressive for someone coming off a 
career high on floor just last week. So really showing her versatility. The former walk on from Atlanta lighting things up for the Tigers early on here in their home meets as we get set for the Tigers next on bars and Georgia on vault. And this is a series that goes way back. These two schools meeting tonight for the 116th time. Georgia leads the overall series, but in recent years, it's been dominated by LSU. In fact, the Jim Dogs have not beaten the Tigers in the last seven years. So trying to overcome that hurdle and win on the road tonight. Trailing after the first rotation as Haley DeYoung gets set to lead things off here on the vault to begin rotation two. Had a season high on the vault last week in the loss at Florida of 9.825. A senior from Vancouver. He was also second on this event at the Canadian National Championships. So hoping to set the right tone here as things begin. And Haley's going to start. She's going to do a Yurchenko full. 9.95 start value. Really does an excellent job. Just the slightest pike in the hips on that landing. If I am being super nitpicky. But that was a fantastic start. Take another look here. Great amplitude off the vault. Just right there, you saw she piked those hips just a little bit. You'll get a really good view right there. As her arms were flaring out, just piked her hips so little. But that is what the judges are looking for. They're looking for deductions. And our first look tonight at the sophomore from Warrensburg, Missouri, Alexis Jeffrey. And Jeffrey, the transfer from UCLA. So from one powerhouse program to another. This combination, Chaposh right back down to the low bar. Gorgeous Cass Hansen right in that vertical position, just the dismount. Full twisting double back. And that is a stuck landing. What a start for LSU. Alexis Jeffrey getting things started. Take a look at this dismount. The height that she gets in the air awareness, she knows right where she is to get that stick. You saw her absorb that landing. Just incredible job for Alexis. So important in that leadoff position to serve as the springboard for the rest of your teammates. And now Katie Finnegan for Georgia next up here on the vault and coming off a season high on this event last week at Florida of 9.825. Katie can showcase really nice form just like that. She keeps those hips open the whole time just to hop on the landing. This is an event for Georgia to really just maintain where they're at. This is not their strongest event out of the four, but this is an event where they know they can maintain and keep everything level. Elena Arenas next up here on the bars for LSU. And when you have these sorts of events, Bridget, where you know you're not at your best and you're trying to manage and maintain, what's the philosophy and the approach? Because you want to be as positive as you can, but as a coach, how do you finesse that, athletes? You really, you just put your best athletes that you know, and the athletes have to really trust the coaches and know that I'm in this lineup because my coach knows I can do it. And Elena does a fantastic job of that. A newcomer in these lineups. And a mistake there. Had a little too much rotation on that Tkachev into her pack. Head coach Jay Clark could not talk enough about how proud he is that, that she's been stepping up this season. Not the routine she wanted. Take a look, she, very difficult combination. She's gonna do a Takach of that. She flies so high. And you saw her feet just go a little bit over the low bar and that stopped her rotation for her pack, ultimately causing that break. So they probably know that be a score they'll wanna drop as the second athlete on bars in rotation two. Now Nicole King, the freshman from Georgia, staying in state for the Jim Dogs. Next up here on the vault. 
Ooh. That is never something you want to see. She was a little crooked on this Yurchenko full. You see her staying calm. It is very difficult in these situations. That is these athletes' teammate, her their sister. Even their competitors Absolutely. certainly feel for them because they're they're very much in the same game, aren't they? One hundred percent. You never want to see an athlete go down. Both squads have dealt with a myriad of injuries this year, too. And this is when the team really has to come together. Not a situation they want to come together for, but this is when Courtney Capetz Carter and her staff really have to trust. And I know that they do. They trust their athletes to come together. The meet continues with Tori Tatum next up here on the bars. Tatum, the sophomore from Minnesota who had an injury-filled season last year herself. And so far, so good. Just a hop on the landing of that dismount. Well, Bridget, when you see an injury like that, whether it's your teammate or your opposition, it kind of takes the air out of the building. How tough is it to go up and be the next athlete competing? It, it can be extremely tough, and I've actually been the athlete that got hurt, and it's tough to get hurt. It's tough to follow an injury. It's just, it's a tough situation, but these athletes work so hard, and that is where this depth from Georgia, we are really going to see it tonight come to life. score on bars that was dropped back in the first rotation. So trying to get things going personally and here tonight, and she'll be comeback. satisfied with that, no doubt. Amanda Cashman, fantastic.
Well, we apologize for the technical difficulties, but seems like we are back as we continue deep to rotation number two now. Final athletes coming up here with LSU. Again, leading Georgia after the first rotation, trying to maintain that lead here at the midway point. Soraya Hawthorne, the senior from Memphis, is the final athlete here on the vault, where as it stands right now, Nicole King's 9-7 would be the score they drop, providing Hawthorne can anchor this rotation. And Soraya is fantastic. Sticks with a Yurchenko full, just a step on the landing. Now the final athletes on the bars for LSU, Haley Bryant, the eight-time All-American, who has 13 titles this season alone. Was the most decorated freshman in school history, and former freshman of the year in the SEC. And now in the prime of her career as a junior here, and trying to put the finishing touches on this bars routine for the home side. And Haley is Outstanding on all four, but she flies on uneven bars. Huge Jaeger. She's dynamic and so precise with her movements. Aggressive in that cast handstand and this dismount. Double front with a half. Just the smallest step of the landing, but incredible routine for Haley. She's won five straight all-around titles, trying to make it six in a row tonight. And as far as this we climb philosophy for LSU this season, they started it earlier in the campaign. We'll learn more about it when we bring you back to Baton Rouge. It's just an honor to be a female athlete in this day, in this world today. I think it's amazing. I want to inspire all the little girls working hard, trying to be in college gymnastics and do what they want to do just to keep working hard. Don't ever give up. You're going to have haters. You're going to have people that doubt you, but just keep going and you'll reach all your goals one day. Haley Bryant coming off a 9-9 on the bars and very much a part of this week time motto that's been adopted by this LSU squad. Here's a part of the documentary they made regarding that earlier. I have a feeling that these kinds of things and these moments sometimes motivate people to do things they didn't otherwise think they could do. Because if you want to honor each other, you honor them with your actions. That's how you fight. We're in a fight, but they know they're in one now too. All right, let's keep this, uh, keep this thing rolling. So we go, and the message stays the same. We climb. It's pretty strong stuff. I mean, you got your hard knocks and your other sports documentaries, but that's very compelling. And the whole documentary is absolutely terrific regarding this LSU program. And this We Climb philosophy is really something that started much earlier in the year. It was born out of a retreat and has really been the overarching umbrella for the way they've approached this season. And it's so important to make those team mottos. Now, did I think they were foreshadowing We Climb? Not necessarily, but there's so much passion behind it. This is the rundown kind of what we climb has come to be they have team meetings every monday that have been absolutely crucial head coach jay clark could not talk enough about how important they are getting the proper rest not the rust off of a workout that's their workout right after their rest day you push the workload the next day and then you get into that competitive mindset every team is doing this but every team has their own way of doing it and head coach jay clark is doing a great job with it LSU leading by four tenths midway through the meet. Rotation three on the way as we continue. On Monday, the only SEC women's game on the schedule. The Lady Vols in Starkville to take on Mississippi State. 
Coverage begins at 7 Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Two rotations down, two left to go. And LSU leading by four tenths of Georgia. And for some context on that lead, Bridget, how big is that margin? And what are the chances of Georgia overcoming it? It is a very big margin. And to compare it, it's like two touchdowns. You've got two minutes left and LSU is winning. So in this third rotation, if Georgia wants to overcome and take that lead, they need some help from LSU and they need LSU to make some mistakes here. So it will be for LSU, our first look at Kai Rivers, the senior from Detroit, leading things off on the beam. And this has been the most challenging event for LSU so far this season, hasn't it? Balance beam is ruthless. It is four inches wide, and anything can happen when you are up there. Slight balance check there. Last week, Kai hit her routine, yes, but she was a little jittery. I want to see her be relaxed on the balance beam, which I know is very hard to say. It's four inches wide. You're in front of a home crowd. Relaxing is a little tough, but trusting their ability is so important. And another balance check there. No balance check there, getting that groove back. Just the dismount. Round off double full, takes a step on the landing. Well, going back a few years, Rivers, in her first ever performance of her collegiate career, it came on beam, it was at Georgia, she scored a 9.95. So it was this event against this team that kickstarted her collegiate career, and now bringing it full circle in her senior season. Erin Williams, the freshman from Knoxville for Georgia. And she is first up here on the floor for the Jim Dogs, who last week at Florida had a few bobbles on the floor that they would like to clean up here at LSU. Opening up with a huge double pike. What a wobbly on that landing in that lunge. Second pass for Aaron. Front pull into a front layout. Combination pass. Final pass, round off backhand spring, double tuck. Little lack of control on her landings, but she hit her routine, and that is what George is looking for. Well, if you are just joining us, a reminder of the criteria, the elements and the rules for a meet like this. Six gymnasts per routine, per event, will compete the five best count. The lowest one is dropped, and then the team with the highest cumulative score wins. And we are now in the third of the four rotations meaning that Georgia is on floor, LSU on beam here with one rotation to go after this one with Alona Shenikova coming up next here on the beam, the two-time U.S. national champion. And LSU with some work to do here. Kai Rivers led things off with a 9-6-2-5, so they'll hope to drop that as the score at the end of this rotation. Alona has beautiful long lines. And the combination here, front aerial into her back handspring, back handspring, great angle to see if she is a little off to the side, 
No problems there. Switch leap to split jump. Beautiful side aerial. I love the way she finishes each element all the way to her fingertips. And the dismount, she's going to do a back handspring, gain her full off the side. And a stuck landing, getting this LSU beam team back on track. That's what you need, don't you? when you have a low score to start out to come right back with that next athlete to get things on the right track. And let's take you through what we're looking for on the floor, Bridget. The judges are looking for difficulty in the tumbling passes, those E passes, and then the presentation and landings. Artistry is so crucial on floor exercise. Every athlete is going to do big tumbling, so we're going to separate you. It is your artistry, your dance, and it is so fun. Sandra Alsadek, the grad student from Venice, Florida. Transferred after four years at Ball State. Where she was the gymnast of the year there last year. Opens with a nice tuck full in. Sandra, a last minute add to this Georgia lineup. So far doing a really nice job. Again, we talked about getting added to the lineup last minute. You always have to be ready if you are an athlete on this Georgia team. And a front tuck, step out to double tuck. Saves that landing. She had what I like to call soft knees a little bit on that landing. Had to take that step back into her lunge, but you would never know that she was not originally in this floor lineup. And now for the balance beam, here are the qualities that the judges are looking for as Sierra Ballad will be next. Dance and acro skills, all the connections, and of course the balance. You don't want to see any balance checks on balance beam. That is where the judges are looking for those deductions. Series back handspring layout step out. Sierra coming after 985. Alona getting this team back on track after Kai Rivers 9.625. Excellent front toss. She is so fierce with her movements, confident up on that balance beam. Just the dismount, round off one and a half. Just the slightest step on that landing, but she was so dynamic with her movements and aggressive in her finishes right here, this front toss. You can see her fingers flick at the very end. It's not coming off that balance beam. And you could say her family's in attendance because head coach Jay Clark is her uncle and her mother was a gymnast for Canada at two different Olympics. So Uncle Jay with a little hug. And after the performance of Sierra Ballard here, third in the rotation for LSU on the beam as we move back to Naya Howard, who's up next on the floor for the gym dogs. Naya 
Maya opening up front through to double tuck. Nice finish there. Naya, one of five athletes competing in the all around tonight, which is currently being led by Brian. Jump series there. Switch half to Wolf Bowl, Wolf Bowl. Naya is such a great competitor and such a performer on floor exercise. And a double pike sticks that landing. Really nice job. She's the first freshman to compete in the all around for Georgia in half a dozen years. She's got some serious chops. Absolutely, and starts things off. This was a gorgeous double pike. You saw she got right to that landing. The judges are looking for deductions, but when they land on floor and they're going backwards and take a step back into their lunge, that is not a deduction. So sometimes it might look like it's when they're a little off, but really no errors there. Things trending in the right direction on the beam for LSU. After the 9-6, they've gone north of 9-8 with the last two athletes. Now, Elena Arenas, who is in the middle of the lineup here. And Bridget, just how important is athlete placement in a selection like this? It's crucial. It really, coaches have to be so strategic because you want the scores to trend up. You want your leadoff to be a guaranteed hit and everybody after that gets a little better and better. Elena really showcasing this year that she belongs in these lineups. Head coach Jay Clark was so impressed with her stepping up. There were no issues getting in these lineups and she's solidifying them for herself this year. Just the dismount, she's gonna do a round off one and a half twist. Had some issues in warm up. And she didn't quite have the rotation in warm up. She sat down two of those dismounts with the blind landing. Starts off really strong with that backhand from layout, step out. a solid front toss. Well, if you wonder how a young woman got away from Athens, Georgia, and went to Baton Rouge to compete at LSU, her mother was a gymnast for the Tigers, and her dad played baseball for LSU. So following in the family footsteps, as Amanda Cashman is about to get her footsteps going here on the floor, an event she won at the Nastia Lukin Cup several years ago. I love watching Amanda on floor exercise, an event where she just shines. She has great tumbling right here. Starts with a one and a half to front pull. two-pass routine. You're seeing a lot of athletes do these two-pass routines, and it's really to save their body. Keeping these athletes healthy is always the number one priority, and managing the wear and tear. And finishes this routine. Nice double tuck 
excellent performance for Cashman Sr. Well, Haley Bryant coming up next, and it rarely gets more decorated than this. First onto the scene as the SEC Freshman of the Year in 2021, won an NCAA title, has five titles this season, part of 13 overall. And now, the way things are going, she is in position to win her sixth consecutive all-around title. Through the first two events, she's gone 9975 and 99. And now here she is, third event, the balance beam. Beautiful front layout to back handspring. Make sure those feet do not move to get that connection. Right here, unique, all on its own. She's gonna do a standing punch front. I should just say standing front because there is no punch. She just <laughs> normally you need a run and a jump and, a, and all that, but not for Haley. Standing front tuck, so impressive. And the dismount front one and a half twist. Just a hop on the landing, but so strong and precise. Haley just doing Haley things. And the consistency and the confidence is so palpable. And this front tuck, strong toes, Haley, strong toes, gripping that beam. <laughs> and next on floor for Georgia, Haley DeYoung. Haley DeYoung next up for Georgia on the floor. Has a lot of action early in her routine. She likes to engage the crowd and get them going. First pass for Haley. Front one and a half twist to lay out, step out. a senior on this Georgia team, has really stepped up this season as a leader in the gym and out of the gym. Had some issues last week with this pass. It's gonna be a roundoff back handspring, triple twist, so hard. Just a tiny hop, but excellent control on that landing. She's had some terrific displays against LSU in the past throughout her career. And take a look at this last pass. This is a triple twist. Most athletes would start with this pass, but Haley finishes showcasing that difficulty, controlling that landing. Really nice work. So a strong way to finish on the beam for LSU, Aaliyah Finnegan who won the title on the beam last week at Arkansas with a 9-9-2-5 and has two beam titles already this season. Five titles overall for the sophomore. Very difficult backhand spring. Layout, step out, layout, step out. Beautiful job. She just floats on the balance beam. Nice switch leap to split jump, showcasing that flexibility in that 180 degrees. It's 
slight balance check there. You saw those arms swing. Looked like she dropped that right shoulder just a little bit, taking her off to the side. And again, that beam just about as wide as a credit card. So <laughs> you're not dealing with much real estate up there. But a stuck dismount. Really the biggest deduction in that entire routine came from the slight balance check on that front aerial. But this series, she flares it. Watch her arms. They flare out to the side and swing right over the top. And it's going to be another good rotation for LSU. They'll be able to drop Kai Rivers 9-6 that led off the beam here in rotation number three. Haley Bryan again went 9-9, and Finnegan rounding things off. So now Soraya Hawthorne, the final performer on the floor for Georgia as they look to hang around here. And Steve, this routine, this routine defines fun and excitement and just performing. She won the floor twice last year, once against LSU. And Soraya opening with a massive double layout. I think it's impossible to watch this floor team and not have a smile on your face and then just enjoy what you are watching. Amazing tumbling, amazing artistry. And a huge front layout, front one and a half to split jump. Wow, 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 wow. So Rhea Hawthorne out here just performing lights out and pass front layout, front one and a half into a split jump. She has to control because she gets so high. She's already won the floor twice in her career against LSU. Can she do it again? Scores coming up and we'll talk about the national qualifying score and how that relates to the postseason as we continue as well. Southern Hoops, a history of SEC basketball is a seven-part documentary. And every Monday through March 13th, we'll have a new show at 9 Eastern, 8 Central. Part two looks at 1960 through 70 with the civil rights impact on the SEC. It's all right here on the SEC Net and the ESPN app. Well, the road to Nationals as of the final week of January. Here are the top teams led by number one, Oklahoma, a team that LSU, by the way, barely lost to, but the Sooners a solid number one. Florida always near the top of the rankings at number two, Michigan three, Utah and UCLA rounding out the top five. And Bridget, that leads us into the QS, the national qualifying score, sounds like it could be complicated, but let's break it down here and explain what that means, and in particular, how it relates to the postseason, which is really what matters. Of course, and the NQS always sounds a lot more complicated than it is. All it is is taking the top six scores from each team. You have to have three of those scores be away scores. You drop the highest, and then you average the five remaining. So ultimately, it's all about scores. The wins and losses are important for that internal confidence, but these high away scores, whether you win or lose, will ultimately help you with your NQS. And the NQS is still a few weeks away from being released, so waiting to see exactly where everyone stands. Where this meet stands, LSU has a huge lead going into the final rotation here on their home floor. LSU has led after every rotation and a sizable margin going into the final event here at the Maravich Center in Baton Rouge.
Once again, Steve Schlanger with Bridget Sloan. And Bridget, LSU may in fact hold on and win this. In fact, it's likely given the score. It's so big at this point over Georgia. But for the Jim Dogs, all is not lost because road scores are very valuable when you look long term ahead towards the postseason, right? This is an opportunity for Georgia to not only showcase to themselves, but to showcase that they have the talent to get a big score, even though they're not going to win the meet necessarily unless LSU has a traumatic floor rotation, which could happen. But at the end of the day, right now, Georgia is focusing on balance beam, an event that should be their best event, according to head coach Courtney Kupetz Carter. When we talked to Courtney Kupetz Carter earlier this week and asked her, What's your best event and what's your worst event? She said, it's the same, balance beam. <laughs> it's the best and it's the worst. <laughs> so explain what she meant by that, Bridget. It's all, balance beam is so tricky because balance beam, you can be so great in practice and then what you can't put it together. And I think that's what she meant. She wants these athletes to put it all together. Six up, six count, six hits. Courtney Kupetz Carter in her sixth year as the head coach and of course one of the top collegiate gymnasts of all time. So she knows what she's talking about and sending up Naya Howard who is first, the freshman from Virginia. And on an event like this, always tricky to be a freshman leading off him, isn't it? I think it's more of exciting. Like, what a proud moment to be a freshman leading off. Your job is to get up there and hit, and that means her coaches know she's capable of it. Handspring layout, step out. Just the slight balance check. You saw those shoulders. That was a great angle. Those shoulders turn towards the crowd. Howard right now sitting third in the all-around competition on the evening as well. And a stealth dismount. Just the slight balance checks throughout that routine. Just looked a little jittery. Didn't look like she was absorbing those landings. But again, she is just a freshman and they are wanting to get the experience for that freshman class. Sierra Ballard will lead things off on floor for LSU. Haley Bryant, meantime, will be last. Bryant in position to win another all-around title here. She's leading coming into the final rotation. The floor is the event that LSU head coach Jay Clark told us is one. They're trying to get sorted out at this point in the season, Bridget. They want to put it together. They want to see these athletes get up there. He knows they're capable of hitting and getting big scores, which means they need to go six up and six hits. Five of those scores are going to count, but he wants to see all six hit. And Sierra opening with a massive double layout. I love the confidence. She walks on the floor. She performs for this crowd. Nice one and a half to lay out. Pass for Sierra, round our back handspring, double pike. Little hop on that landing, you saw her go backwards into that lunge. But ultimately, outstanding performance for Sierra. <laughs> Having oh, a lot the gritty. of fun out there. <laughs> Bring it home with the gritty, gotta do it. <laughs> 
Her cousin plays beach volleyball here at LSU. Ballard, the junior from nearby in Mandeville, Louisiana. And now here is Jackie Moran, the freshman from Santa Cruz. Our first glimpse at her tonight, and one of the eight freshmen this Georgia roster. Just how difficult is it to integrate so many new young faces into an SEC program like this? It is extremely challenging, and the way you practice sometimes is not the way you perform. So I know this Georgia staff is wanting to get as many athletes in front of these crowds to see how they're going to compete and make sure that they are ready when the time comes. One of the things that Courtney Kopetz Carter told us is while this is the second of three in a row on the road for Georgia, they like going back to back on the road because it gets the athletes used to the hostile crowds, to not getting energy from the people they're performing in front of and just getting it from themselves instead. Absolutely. And Jackie, beautiful side aerial, the back handspring. You saw those shoulders were perfectly square. It can be tough when you're the away team and your home crowd. You got to make your own energy, stay in your bubble. Sometimes they're announcing scores when you're performing your routine, so you have to deal with a lot of distractions you don't have to deal with at home. That's right, keep that focus, and wow, stuck landing, round off one and a half twist. I think Jackie is going to find herself in this beam lineup a lot more the rest of this season. She is so solid when she is up there and just so confident in her elements, and that is why Courtney put her in this lineup. She just, she knows she can do it, and what a way for Jackie to showcase that beam routine tonight. Alona Shetakova for LSU, the senior on floor next. And conversely, compared to Georgia's youthful roster, she's one of 12 upperclassmen for Jay Clark and LSU here in Baton Rouge. And a front double twist. Second pass here, round off one and a half, front layout. Great air time on that front layout. Final pass. And a huge front one and a half. The split jump almost had a little lack of control going into that split jump, but gets it back and finds that landing. Well, this has been a gritty performance at home here for LSU. And remember, they are without their senior superstar, Kaya Johnson, the eight-time All-American and Specialist of the Year. CC. She is out for the year with an Achilles injury suffered a couple of weeks ago. And there will never be another Kaya Johnson. But the one thing that head coach Jay Clark talked to us about was the passion that these athletes have and the positive attitude. So much adversity that they have faced all season long so far, yet they still come into the gym and are ready to work series of injuries for LSU this season, but they're overcoming tonight with Josie and Jenny here on the beam, the grad student from just west of Philadelphia. And a triple series here, backhand spring layout, step out. Only did one tonight. She's capable of doing a second layout step out. No problem in playing it safe feeling confident and comfortable up on that balance beam.
Switch lead to straddle court. Just the dismount. Backhand spring, one and a half twist, and a stuck landing. The excitement that that Georgia Beam lineup is showing tonight. Really nice job for Josie. Has had some trouble in the past on balance beam, so this is an awesome moment for her. A transfer from Kentucky, and now here is Chase Brock, who is having quite the evening. The junior from Atlanta. And what a final rotation this has been for the Tigers. Coming out of the gate with a flourish. A 9875 from Ballard, and then Shenikova a moment ago went 9925. Chase is an athlete. I, I am very excited for the rest of season and her future in collegiate gymnastics because she has so much power, opens with that massive double pike straight to the landing. And her finish there. Second pass, a almost stuck double tuck. Took a slight hop there. Chase, Chase, an athlete that head coach Jay Clark could not talk enough about and how impressed. Oh, and a fall on that pass. Just didn't have enough juice in the tank. Didn't have that rotation. Now had a career not high the on the floor. Yeah, career high last week at Arkansas on the floor for Chase Brock, but not the finish he had hoped for here tonight at home. Had two great passes, starts with a huge double pike, great air time in that. And the second pass, a double tug, really sees the landing nicely, but that last pass just didn't have enough rotation. And it looked like her knees buckled just a little bit on that first pass, or on that first element of her last pass, not able to get that bounce into that front layout. And now Jeffrey Scott for Georgia as the gym dogs are down to their final three athletes of the evening. Again, lead all night long for LSU. Something interesting about this Georgia program as well is back during the offseason, they brought in a former Alabama gymnast who is a Marine to take them through some Marine-style training to get them ready for this year, too. That's pretty interesting. Absolutely. Building that team building and taking these athletes just making them get a little closer. Helps them depend on each other. And Joffrey nailing that back handspring swing down. She actually fell on that last week at Florida. Courtney said, I'm not quite sure what happened, but it was not normal. <laughs> oh, and falls on that full turn. Now, when you see someone fall, sometimes they get right back up. Others take a moment. What do you prefer? Which way to do it? You know, it is whatever you need to do to get yourself settled and ready to get back on the beam. She got up relatively quickly, not the routine that she wanted. But I know for me, I, I needed to get back up on that beam ASAP. I don't need not to look wait. at the beam and notice <laughs> that I'm on the ground and not standing on the beam. I don't need to see that. I just got to get right back up. And who knows, maybe the judges will take a long blink and they'll just miss it, you know? You never know well, what could happen in gymnastics. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Team Dogs did have their first three scores above 9-8, so the Scott score will probably be the one they hope to drop here. While KJ Johnson is the fourth on the floor for LSU here. KJ, the sophomore from Dallas, all SEC her freshman year last season. And 
KJ is going to open with a huge tuckle, open tuckle, and she's not going to grab her legs. Outstanding. Volunteer assistant Courtney McCool Griffith does all the choreography. And when we talked to Courtney earlier this week, passion and emotion she has when she just talks about gymnastics is remarkable. She loves choreography, and I love that LSU. They showcase each personality of the athlete having fun. Each athlete gets to pick their music, and they just start from scratch and finish with a beautiful choreography. And a huge double tuck to end this routine for KJ. Wow. Incredible job. Now LSU on their way to evening their record at 500 in the SEC with routines like this tonight. Take a look. This is first pass. Round off back handspring. Tuck full in. Notice she does not grab her legs and just soars through the air, finds that landing. Really, really nice job. So Chase Brock before her had a score of 9.075. They'll hope to drop that. Remember, she slipped near the end. KJ Johnson with a nice bounce back a moment ago. And now Vanessa Denise here. Our first look at the senior from New Jersey on the she matched a season high on the balance beam at Florida last week with a 9-9. Beautiful side aerial to back handspring. I love watching Vanessa on balance beam because her elements just flow. They all have, oh, and I spoke too soon, break in, in that aerial. You saw those shoulders go straight to the side. Bridget, how tough is it for someone like Vanessa just doing beam here tonight? You come to the arena earlier, you warm up, and then you wait around so long before you get to perform. How tough is that? It is extremely hard. I never understood how event specialists did it. I I struggled. I only did it for a short period of time in my college career, but it was it's very challenging because you have to you get high from the start of the beat and your lows, and then you got to get right back up to that high energy. Vanessa finishing that beam routine with a gainer full off the beam. Well, through three rotations, the standings in the all around and the two LSU heavyweights up top, Haley Bryant and Aaliyah Finnegan. And it comes down to those two now with Aaliyah Finnegan first, followed by Bryant to finish things up on the floor for the Tigers. Double Arabian into a stag jump. Perfect landing. Combination pass here. She's going to do a round off backhand. Two and a half punch front. Excellent control.
clearing up. Final pass for Aaliyah. One and a half front layout. She likes it, the crowd likes it. Fantastic performance for Aaliyah Finnegan, standing all around. And the sophomore from Kansas City who already has five titles this season. Forced to do multiple events now because of injuries to other athletes, but she is delivering for Jay Clark. And that is a, such a challenge for these coaches. You don't want to push these athletes too much when they are doing all four events, but Aaliyah has really stepped up and they are monitoring her in the gym performances, but when she shows up on Friday night, she's gonna hit. So you see the last two scores, the 9-2, the 9-6, not what Georgia had hoped for on the beam, so they look to finish strong with the senior from Vancouver, Haley DeYoung. And that was a 10. You could probably tell from the reaction of the crowd, that is a 10 type of response. And Haley DeYoung right now dialing in, focusing on her beam routine. And this takes some nerve, doesn't it? This is when you just, you put your blinders on and you just focus on you. A lot of these athletes don't even notice sometimes the crowd around them. Balance Beam is such a mentally challenging event, and when you've got a wild crowd going on and cheering around you, it can be really difficult, but Haley showing this veteran performance. And a one and a half dismount, not quite a stuck landing, but a very strong routine for Haley DeYoung. But it was the first 10 of the night, courtesy of Aaliyah Finnegan. Outstanding. Just finds the landings, and I love the facial expression. Such a performer, and she, so first career perfect 10 on floor for her. All the emotions, that is so exciting for her. And pushing her teammate Haley Bryant as a result in the all-around, coming down to those two here at the end of the meet in front of the home crowd. What a Friday night in Baton Rouge this has turned out to be. And now here is Bryant, the eight-time All-American with 13 titles already this year, looking for her sixth consecutive all-around title as well. And a front handspring, double front, wow. Excellent job on that landing. If there's anyone who can follow a 10, it's Haley Bryant. Absolutely. One more pass. So far, this routine has been perfect. And a front double twist to end this incredible floor routine. Steve, I don't want to jinx it, but coming after a perfect 10 from Aaliyah Finnegan. I don't know what the judges are going to take off. Some athletes would be intimidated following a 10. Bryant relishes in it, embraces the moment. Wow. And the difficulty that Haley has in this floor routine. This is her third, a front handspring double twist. Most athletes start with that pass. Haley, she finishes with it. How exciting. What a floor rotation. Haley Bryant 
with nothing south of a 9-9 here tonight. Another sensational performance. Huge win for LSU. And we'll come back with more from Baton Rouge. Of any gymnastics meet, a perfect 10. And that was delivered by the sophomore Aliyah Finnegan of LSU. Absolutely gorgeous routine from the artistry to the performance. And it, it's right here, the emotion. That is what I absolutely love. Her first perfect 10 for floor exercise. And a season's best score for LSU, 197-700. The ninth ranked Tigers with a decisive win over the Gym Dogs of Georgia. Also their 17th consecutive win over Georgia as well. And for Haley Bryant, her sixth consecutive all-around title, as once again, she was sensational here at the Maravich Center tonight. Absolutely an incredible job for Haley Bryant and the entire LSU team. But Haley starting off on vault, this is where she shines. I mean, outstanding vault performance, takes it to uneven bars. She is so precise, but also so dynamic and determined. You know she wanted that stuck dismount. She will be working on that in the gym this week. Just an impressive athlete all around, and I love the difficulty that she brings to her routines. She's not afraid. She's not going to water it down. She's going to bring those E-passes and I would not be surprised if she's got a perfect 10 in her near future on that floor exercise routine. And SEC Gymnast of the Week a couple of weeks ago as well. The junior from North Carolina, Haley Bryant. Now half a dozen consecutive all-around titles. She continues to roll for the Tigers who beat up on the dogs here tonight in Baton Rouge. So another fun Friday night down on the bayou. LSU improves to an even two and two in SEC competition. And coming up next here on the SEC Network, it's Southern Hoops Part One. Now for Bridget Sloan and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Steve Schlanger as we say good night from Baton Rouge, Louisiana.